started. Thank you all for being here in Carter and Clark's beautiful gallery. You might see it's a live in dub. We've got some new developments in this gallery. It looks beautiful. Thank you all for being here. I'm Leora Sponko, the executive director of Lane Arts Council. We work to cultivate strong and creative arts communities. This year we are celebrating 40 years. Yeah, 40 years of being a nonprofit in the arts. And so it's really special. We'll be celebrating, this is kind of our kickoff event for the Art Walk, and we'll be celebrating more events throughout the year, so stay tuned for that. Um, you know, I, at every stop I'm talking about the impact of our programs in the community, and one thing I just wanted to start off, one of our biggest programs is our arts education programs. We've been doing that since 1978, so it's really our longest program impacting thousands and thousands of young people in our community. We have artist residency programs, and that's evolved now into apprenticeship programs where artists get mentored by apprentices. We have um, arts integration. We're working with teachers on integrating the arts in the classrooms, and we're, schools are telling us kids are coming to school more on art days, on art core days, on when our programs happen. So we're seeing more engagement from young people, the kids are telling us how much they get to choose and how empowering that is to, to choose, you know, how they create their art and how, you know, what type of art they make. And so we're really out to make a difference in arts education. So if you'd love to hear more about our programs, we'll be here all night and you can talk to any of us staff or board members. So um, this gallery is such an important gallery um, in our community, and I will introduce the owner, Karen Clark. But before that, I just wanted to thank our sponsor of this art walk, which is Off the Waffle. You guys all know about that wonderful waffle place we have down the street. Thank you, Off the Waffle, for sponsoring January. And also wanted to let you know that Oregon Contemporary Theater is giving away tickets to their upcoming performance of the last five years. And Mariana has a bowl over here. She'll take your name, and we will be pulling some names out throughout the art walk. So please see Mariana. All right, so without further ado, Karn, we'd love to just get a few words from you about the gallery and some of the new developments. You have um, some new ideas of what you're doing with this gallery this year. Yeah, hi, thanks for squeezing in here <laughs> tonight. I appreciate it. And I want to give the mic to Craig Spillman here to, yeah, very quickly. But um, I um, am doing what I'm calling spotlight shows or spotlight exhibits now. Um, if you've been in our gallery before, um, I've been here for about 13 and a half years. And I would say most of our shows are one person shows. So I'll ask an artist to have 30 or 40 pieces, frame those up, and we install it, and um, and uh, leave that show up for a long, you know, like six weeks, because it was so much effort to put it up, and it's been wonderful, but I wanted to keep, to bring more people in to reference, to be changing the shows more often, make it easier on myself, and have, have a chance for, uh, to show uh, more of the artists that I represent on a regular basis. So I'm doing these smaller, maybe two or three wall shows, and Craig Spillman is my kickoff uh, artist, and I knew he had this wonderful series of drawings that I was anxious to get in here, and I think it, it's really nice to be able to see them, and then also there's other works by people that we've been representing, so hopefully that's fun, the variety is fun. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Thank you. Let's give an applause to Karen for all that wonderful work. Yeah. You are worthy. You are worthy. You're incredible. Thank you so much for your contribution to the arts community. We love to see galleries thrive. Thank you. And so now Craig Spillman is our featured artist for this art walk. Craig, thanks so much for being here. You'll find his work here on these walls. Um, and so he's the first, as Karen mentioned, of the Spotlight Artists. And so, Craig, if you could tell us about the series that you um, wrote in your statement that it was a lot of reflections from your experience at Playa, the artist residency. So tell us how this work came about. Well, actually, the work didn't start at Playa. The first drawing in the series is the one on this wall on the right. And um, I was driving up with my wife. I was riding in the car with my wife and uh, going to Portland. And I love going up I-5 or... 99, either one, uh, and looking around, and it was one of these um, beautiful, dark, uh, near-dusk days, and I saw this cloud formation that I really liked, and I said to my wife, do you have any kind of paper or anything? So this is where it came from. <laughs> she, she had a ballpoint pen and, and a shopping list or something. <laughs> um, 
and then as I was looking at that, I was thinking, you know, um, I spent a lot of time at Playa, and, and uh, I did some, you know, working drawings and a lot of watercolor studies. And the watercolors um, were very horizontal in their format. And when I saw, you know, I finished this drawing and I thought, that would be a beautiful format to do a series of drawings based on my Playa experience. But none of these drawings were done at Playa. Um, they were all done in my studio uh, based on watercolor studies and things like that. Um, yeah, I'm not holding them. No, it's perfect. So, and I've been to that area in Summer Lake, which is very inspiring mm -hmm. over at Playa. So what is that like for an artist? You're there in the middle of nowhere, and, uh, then, and then what happens? Well, I don't look at it as the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Um, it's a kind of country that I would like to live in, and um, there's so much going on there. There's so much wildlife. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's beautiful. Uh, it may seem a little stark, but there's, there's much more going on than I think a lot of people think there is. Um, Playa is a, is a wonderful place to go. It's, it's a, a residency um, that um, is for writers, poets, uh, visual artists, and uh, natural scientists. And you can go for residencies um, anywhere from two weeks up to, I think, probably a couple of months. I'm not sure what the, the you know, greatest length of time one can spend there. Um, you have solitude if you want it in a beautiful setting. Uh, other than when a truck roars by, uh, it's very quiet. Um, and there's also uh, usually seven or eight other people there uh, that if you want to have community, uh, that's available to you as well. Um, so I chose um, mostly solitude and a bit of community as well. Uh, it gave me a chance to wander around, do sketches. Uh, if I wanted to just sit on my butt and think about things or not think about things, I could do that too. Um, if anybody's, you know, in any of those areas and wants to go there, um, I would certainly you know, recommend uh, looking up contact information and uh, going. It's a great place to go. Yeah. And you've been, you know, you've been teaching for many years and you've been, it sounds like um, a lot of your work is based in, on Oregon landscapes. And how, if you could tell me more about um, how Oregon inspires your art? I think in a lot of ways, it, it's, um, it took a long time. I've lived in Oregon now for 40 some years, and I really didn't start working with landscape until maybe 15, 16 years ago. Um, much of my work was what I would call distorted uh, human expressionist type of thing. You know, these kind of distorted uh, figures, um, often based on personal experiences of mine or, or you know, things that I was feeling. Um, they're not the type of thing that most people want to hang on their wall. Um, and most of this interior stuff was what occupied me until about 15 or 16 years ago, and then all of a sudden it hit me. I'm living in this really beautiful place. Um, and it's so varied. Um, you know, you have just about every type of, of uh, geologic or uh, climate uh, environment in the state. And uh, I just began to explore it, really. And it, it finally grabbed me. Um, at first, I kind of, you know, just neglected that idea of dealing with the landscape. I didn't think I would enjoy it. And then when I started doing it, I felt I enjoyed it tremendously. Mm -hmm. I have one more question before we open it up, so think of questions you might have. And, you know, with your experience teaching over the years, um, and now just as such an accomplished artist, what would you tell a, a young artist that's just getting started? Don't look for the magic formula, just work hard. Yeah. Seriously. Fantastic, great advice. So who has questions for Craig? Yes. If you ever travel down to Avert Rim and Hard Mountain uh, and that area, uh, Fort Rock, India, that's uh, part of the landscape. 
Um, I've been in the fields of Steens Mountain area near Hart, but not, not really spending much time there. But I have spent time in the Steens Mountain, Alvord Desert, that area, fields. I love it. I want to get over to Owyhee at some time. I'm not sure if I pronounce that properly, but it looks beautiful from, from what I've seen in pictures of it. Yes. What are the medium do you work with? Um, I was trained as a printmaker, primarily a lithographer, um, and I work with intaglio. Um, I do monoprints, I do drawings with various media, uh, watercolor, and occasionally when I'm feeling uh, daring, an oil painting. I don't consider myself really a painter, it's more of a printmaker or a drawer. Okay, any other questions for Craig? Well, if you do, please um, come see Craig. This is such an opportunity to talk with such an accomplished artist. Enjoy the gallery. We're going to be here for another few more minutes, and then we'll be heading over to Gilton Gossamer for our next stop. So, so thank you, Craig. Fantastic work. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.
Carl, this is Paul. We're going to play mostly traditional American music, sort of start with the blues and, and work from there. Um, this first one is a classic song by uh, Sonny Boy Williamson, the new aficionado is at Sonny Boy II. And uh, shows off, uh, he was a legendary harmonica player, so this shows off uh, Palmer's harmonica chops. It's called Help!
Can you give me tonight?
somebody uh, singing along, feel free to do that. This is not classical music. This is participatory folk music right here. We're kind of going through the legends. What have we got here so far? We've got Sonny Boy Williamson. We did some Lightning Hopkins. Here's B.B. King, uh, legendary player. Just passed away what, a month or two ago. Something like that. It's a sad loss, but uh, the music lives on.
you sing along? Let's just sing along. So. It's in the key of B flat. <laughs>
Sawyer and Becky Thatcher in Mark Twain's books called The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And uh, actually, if anybody's interested afterwards, I got these, this little song written up with a backstory, and I'll be glad to you know, pass these out for you if anybody wants that. Anyway, here's a little song. And uh, I'm going to get my wife Gail to come up and harmonize with this on this one. Earth and sing in the sky with a pretty rainbow. 